Hello. Let's continue our talks on Stoicism. Well, we were going now over the Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. We had ended up in Book 7. This is Section 27, which I think is actually a, a very relevant section at this point in time. Do not dream of possession of what you do not have. Rather, reflect on the greatest blessings in what you do have, and on their account, remind yourself how much they would have been missed if they were not there. But at the same time, you must be careful not to let your pleasure in them habituate you to dependency to avoid distress if they are sometimes absent. Uh, we live in uh, pretty fascinating times right now, right? Uh, this is uh, for posterity. This was the, the time of the great coronavirus pandemic. We've had to stay inside for a long time. And uh, when I, I check my social media feeds, I see a lot of people uh, uh, talking about things like, oh, I, I, I bought more stuff online, uh, more Amazon, more this, more that. Yeah. So... This is a, uh, I would say, a, a bit of a theme in, in Stoicism that, that ties into to a larger thought within the whole philosophy of Stoicism. Epictetus has a, a section that's very similar to this about desiring things that you cannot have, etc. But in a nutshell, I think what this boils down to is we live in a society that at least in the West, that, that very strongly emphasizes consumerism. You, you want to have this, and you want to have that, and you need to have this. and blah, blah. That's really encouraged, right? It's, it's, it's encouraged, and it is appreciated to have a lot of things, a big house and a nice car and all these kinds of things. Now, what I mean by this ties into a bigger Stoic thing is that Stoicism is about therapia, right? Greek Greek word where we derived our therapy, right? From which we derived our therapy. Therapia. So, in other words, doing those things, learning to think about certain things in certain ways so that those things don't upset you. Now, what is a really surefire way to upset yourself to kind of long for something that you don't have, or maybe something that you cannot have, or maybe in this context, long for something that you do not need. When you purchase things, for example, that gives you a little bit of a, a rush, your, your, your brain responds in a way that, that is, is enjoyable, pleasurable, oh, a new thing coming in, ooh, 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 ooh. We, we all know that feeling, oh, ooh, there's the mailman or mail person, and ooh, they're going to bring a parcel. But how many times have you received a parcel like that and, and, and open it up, and then you're excited for the contents, and then you put them aside and you continue your work? So then, in other words, you're not really that excited, it was just it kind of... Your, your purchasing behavior just filled a void, right? And I think now that many of us are inside a lot of the time and we can't go out that much, we do this a lot. We do a lot of online shopping and buy this and buy that. And we end up with a lot of things we don't need. And unfortunately, that in itself can lead to more stress, right? Then we become even more stressed because now you have all kinds of things that you didn't need that you may have trouble paying for, that, that you, you, you can't pay off, or that these kinds of things. So I really enjoy what, what Marcus wrote here. Do not dream of possession of what you do not have. Now, of course, some things are definitely worth dreaming about. Having, having a nice job, for example, or, or having whatever it is you, 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 you would desire that would make you happy. I don't know, say a romantic partner or something. But the problem, that's not really possession, but you know what I mean. Like These are things you could, you could strive to obtain. But once those kinds of things become a little obsessive and you believe that you can only be happy and that's where i think stoicism comes in if you start to believe you can only be happy if you have those things then you are making your happiness your contentment contingent upon having that thing or owning that thing and then you are 
as Marcus says here, you're, you're, you're dreaming about something that you do not actually have. And that will lead to stress. That will lead to unpleasant sensations and, and things that you would rather not have, feelings that you would rather not have. And there is a solution too. Rather reflect on the greatest blessings and what you do have. And on their account, remind yourself how much they would have been missed if, if they were not there. This for me was, um, to give you a concrete example, was a, a powerful reason at some point to really thin out my, my collection of fountain pens. I'm thinking that if you're watching this, you, you probably know my channel, but if you don't, my, my YouTube channel is, is basically devoted to fountain pen reviews, and at some point I had a pretty big collection that was into a few hundred, like 300 pens or so. But I didn't actually use most of those pens. So I ended up selling off those pens, and now I have way fewer pens, about 10% of what I had, but I love every pen. So now, when I, when I am on the verge of, of purchasing another pen, for example, which doesn't happen that often anymore, but if I am there, I ask myself, well, what will this truly give me? Is this something that will truly give me happiness, or is this something that will give me a quick rush, and I have that, and then... Half a year later or a year later, I think, I actually don't really like this thing. And you end up selling it off again, right? It's a big problem. So I think that this kind of reasoning, instead of thinking, I want to have this thing and I'm going to pursue that thing and I'm going to, uh, maybe in an extreme case, I, I go into debt or I, I spend more than I actually wanted to spend, but I, you know, I feel bad about that now. You could also turn that around and think, but what do I have? What do I already own? And does that make me happy? Right? And, and in, 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 in certain ways, I think this applies to a lot of avenues in our lives. Especially for my dear friend, Ellen, I shall talk about once more about cars, because, because I'm, I'm not a car person. Um, I have a functional car and sometimes I see I don't know anything about cars but sometimes I see fancy cars and I know they are fancy because I know enough about them to know at least that I think oh, it would be kind of fun right to have something really fancy but then I also think yeah but what do I use a car for to get to work and to do groceries basically I don't need something that can go from zero to 100 miles an hour in whatever a small amount of time those cars do that in because I have no use for that so instead of looking for that and then I would have to purchase a car and it would be expensive and it would, instead of doing that I can also think yeah but I have a car and it gets me exactly where I need to be right and that's the end of it so instead of seeking something that I don't actually need because I already have something that serves all my basic needs I can also look at what I have and think how fortunate I am to have a car because I am because when we lived in the Netherlands we didn't own a car now to be honest we didn't sorry sip of water to be honest we didn't really need a car because there's very good public transportation but still there have been moments where it would have been very nice for us to, to have a car but now I do and I'm very fortunate and very happy to have that I don't have I don't have the type of job that's uh, likely to make me a millionaire, but then I really love that job. And every day when I wake up, I can't wait to get to work. And a lot of people have jobs that they just do because, just because, you know? So in that regard too, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate. So instead of seeking out something that might make me a millionaire one day, I just feel very blessed for what I do have because I love it so much. And I think that that viewpoint of, of dreaming, of possessing things that you don't own, and most importantly, from a stoic viewpoint, making your happiness contingent upon those things, that's where things get a little dangerous. Because take that argument one step further. If you say, uh, this is a very cliched example, but if you say, I would like to have a four-bedroom house that's detached with a white picket fence, 
and then I'll be happy. What's the inevitable conclusion if you do not have a four-bedroom house that is detached with a white picket fence? That you will not be happy, but also that until you obtain that, you will not be happy. But now what if you can never obtain that goal? Then the logical consequence is you will never be happy. So instead of striving for those kinds of things, some of which may be within your reach, but other things may not be, right? And especially those things that are not really within your reach or not fully within your control, because that's kind of what this boils down to again, right? It's that, that classic dichotomy of control and stoicism of some things are and some things are not within your control. If you strive to obtain something that's not fully within your control to obtain, that can only lead to unhappiness, really, right? Hey, I understand you can work really hard and try to get a better job and all those things. Yes, of course, that's why I said it's not fully under your control. Very important point, I think. Cherish what you have instead of blindly seeking what you would like to have. Of course, you can do whatever you can and you should do whatever you can to obtain what you would really like to have. But don't do so blindly. Maybe ask yourself if this is something you truly need. Or if it's just something you would prefer to have. And just making that distinction, well, it's a necessity or it's a preference, I think can already make you change the way you look at these kinds of things. That's it. I hope this was useful. And I will gladly see you again next week for more talk about stoicism. Bye.